This is the first Thunderbolt 5 SSD to hit the market, and is a Thunderbolt 5 SSD really that much faster than a Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 SSD? Well, in this video we're going to find out, plus I want to tear this thing open to see what's inside and see if we can add our own SSD to it. With the new Thunderbolt 5 devices, SSDs can now get up to 80 gigabits per second compared to 40 gigabits per second on Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 drives. And Thunderbolt 5 can actually get up to 120 gigabits when it comes to displays, but we don't have anything available for that yet for testing. This is the OWC Envoy Ultra. This is OWC's newest SSD and the only shipping Thunderbolt 5 SSD at the time of this recording. This is a solid piece of aluminum around here acting as a big heatsink. And as you can see, it does have an attached cable, which OWC says is for water and dust proofing, but apparently also for power. I found a Reddit post with an OWC engineer explaining that the built-in cable for this SSD is mostly because of power constraints in the Thunderbolt 5 spec or the power draw that the SSD is using. I know a lot of people are concerned about this cable being attached, but OWC is saying that in 2025, they will have user replaceable cables. And for the other drive, we're using this Acasis enclosure. This is a USB 4 enclosure, which also gets up to 40 gigabits per second, just like Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. And inside, I'm actually using a couple year old Sabrent Rocket Q NVMe SSD. Now the specs on this SSD are not really that high. I think around 4,000 or 4,200 megabytes per second is what is expected if this was an internal drive. But let's go ahead and see how these two devices compare, starting off with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. A lot of Mac users like to use this to kind of gauge the performance of their SSD. And you can see that right off the bat, we are getting around 5,100 megabytes per second in both read and write speed, which is pretty impressive. I mean, that is definitely way faster than I've seen on a regular Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 drive. And if we look at the other drive inside the USB 4 enclosure, we can see that I'm getting around 2,100 megabytes write and up to 2600 megabytes read, which is actually fairly good. That's right in line with generally the fastest Thunderbolt SSDs that I've tried. If we look at the amorphous disk mark test, we can get a little bit more information. This app tests sequential and random read and write speeds. We're using a four gigabyte test file and each test is running three times to get an average. And you can see that the OWC Envoy Ultra is getting an impressive 6300 megabytes per second for read and 5100 megabytes per second for write, which is very, very good. And if you look at these random numbers down here, think of all the little things that your file system and your OS does. All of your spotlight indexing and Apple intelligence summarizing messages and notifications and every little thing that happens in the background. These random read and writes are very important for an operating system and just the general function and the feel of how your computer runs. This 704 megabytes per second is pretty impressive for this random 4K file size write test with a Q depth of 64, meaning it's got basically 64 write commands waiting. But the write speed is a little bit lower than I would expect compared to this read speed over here. If we look at the Sabrent Rocky Q drive over here in the USB 4 enclosure, I'm getting about 3000 megabytes per second read and 2000 or about 2100 megabytes per second write, which is fairly good for a USB or Thunderbolt 4 drive. No issues or complaints from me on that. We can see that the random 4K Read is about a third of what you get on the OWC, but the write speed for the random is quite a bit higher, which is interesting. So right off the bat, the initial benchmark performance of this Thunderbolt 5 SSD is pretty darn impressive, but those benchmark tests don't really tell the full story, especially when it comes to sequential writes where caching is involved. Now I want to explain the basics of how caching works on these SSDs using M&Ms because it makes a huge difference, especially with really large file writes. But first I want to show you this cool new two-in-one magnetic charger from channel partner Ugreen. This is the Ugreen Magflow Qi 2 two-in-one wireless charger, and it can deliver up to 15 watts of wireless charging for your MagSafe compatible iPhone and other Qi 2 powered devices. That means you can power up an iPhone 16 Pro from zero to 34% in just 30 minutes. Plus, you can also charge your AirPods at up to five watts with the built-in cradle, reducing cable clutter and the need for another charger. This tiny, portable, and powerful Qi 2 certified charger weighs just 8.3 ounces, but is perfect for a bedside table when using the iPhone in standby mode, for propping your phone up to take video calls, or even to read an email at just the right angle at up to 70 degrees. And because it folds flat, it's great for taking on the go to the office or when traveling. So if you want to check out the Ugreen Magflow Qi 2 2-in-1 wireless charger or other Ugreen Qi 2 products today, you can save by using the links and codes in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Okay, caching. Let me demonstrate using these Christmas M&Ms, which my wife says tastes better than regular M&Ms, but I think she's full of it. 
Let's say there's a hole in this bag of M&Ms and I needed to get them out of this bag and into my mouth as efficiently as possible. I could pour some in my hand and then put them in my mouth, but I can only chew so many at one time. Instead, I can pour a lot more and faster into a large glass. And if I have too much to fit in the glass, then I can go back to eating them directly from the bag. Eventually, I'll start eating more M&Ms from this glass, making more room available to put more M&Ms on top. So just like with the M&Ms, when we start copying files to an SSD, we're going to start filling up the cache first. And eventually, if that fills up, we will then go to slower storage. To make this a little bit more scientific than just copying a folder full of files, I'm going to be using AJA to do a constant write to the SSD. I'm going to use a test file that's around 75% of the SSD space. And then for settings, it's just going to be a continuous write and it's just gonna be write only, no read test on this. Then I'm going to use IOSTAT to monitor the disk performance and write that out to a file every one second for 15 and a half minutes to see how this drive performs under a really stressful, really long sequential write. So we'll just go ahead and start that monitoring now. And you can see right now there's zero usage on this disk. And once I hit start, that should change. And there we go. So now we're going to wait about uh, 15 minutes and see what the results look like. So here's the results after running the test on both of these drives. The blue line is the OWC Thunderbolt 5 drive and the red is my USB 4 enclosure. So we can see that the Thunderbolt 5 drive wrote very quickly for a short period of time. So it wrote at around 48, 4900 megabytes per second for around looks like 10 seconds. And then it dropped all the way down to around 1700 megabytes per second 16, 1700 megabytes per second for the rest of the 15 minute file copy or file write. With the Sabrent Rocket Q in the Acasis enclosure, it was running around 2100 megabytes per second, but it held that for a very long time. It held it for, looks like over seven minutes. It was running at 2100 megabytes per second, and then it plummeted down to around three to 500 megabytes per second, which is quite a drop. If we look at this graph, we can see the cumulative write amount on these drives. So we can take a look at the cache. So the cache on the Thunderbolt 5 drive really went to about 50 gigabytes per second or so before it tapered off into the slower speed, the slower 1700 megabytes per second. But the Sabrent Rocket Q actually went for about 900 gigabytes so its cache is 900 gigabytes compared to about 50 gigabytes, which is a pretty big difference. But overall, at the end of the 15 minute test, the OWC Thunderbolt 5 ended up writing around 1.5 terabytes compared to 1.1 terabytes on the Sabrent. So this test is probably flawed in some way. So let me know down below what you think about it. But this gives me a general idea of how these two drives compare against each other. Now we know what is inside this USB 4 enclosure because, well, we can see it. But what is inside this OWC Thunderbolt 5 drive? Well, let's crack it open and find out. Now this is a little bit nerve wracking because it is a $600 drive that I bought myself. But the first thing we need to do is figure out where the screws are. So I'm going to use a knife to kind of pry open the bottom pads and there we go. It looks like we have some Torx screws and if I pull out my handy dandy iFixit toolkit, I can grab a T6 Torx and pull these screws out. Well, it looks like I have to take off the bottom pad to find some more screws and there we are. Looks like inside we have an OWC Aura Pro 4, which gets up to 7,300 megabytes per second read and 6,300 megabytes write if this was an internal drive. But of course, Thunderbolt 5 is slower than an internal PCI slot. We can see the attached Thunderbolt 5 cable and it is just a regular cable with a rubber grommet. But let's get a better look at this cable by popping out the drive first and then taking out a couple more screws to take out the Thunderbolt 5 controller. And there we have it. This is the first Thunderbolt 5 SSD controller in the wild. So pretty darn cool. With just a little bit of wiggling, we can release the grommet from the case and pull the entire cable out. And here you can see it's just a Thunderbolt 5 cable. Now what if we could take everybody's favorite SSD, the Samsung 990 Pro, and put it inside what is essentially now a Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. The 990 Pro can get read speeds up to 7,400 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 6,900 megabytes per second. But let's see what we can get with this OWC Thunderbolt 5 controller. All right, so these speeds might be just slightly exaggerated because a brand new, fresh, never touched drive is going to be slightly faster, but holy crap, 6,200 megabytes per second write speed and 5,800 megabytes per second read. This is insane. Like this is next level external drive speed right here. That is pretty darn impressive. And if we move over to amorphous disk mark, we can see that we're getting even faster, 7,000 megabytes per second read and 6,600 megabytes per second for write. I mean, that is astonishing. 
and then we get 701 random read and 300 megabytes per second random write. I mean, these speeds are crazy. This is by far the fastest external drive I've seen. And now we can use the AJA and run the same very large sequential write test onto this 990 Pro. Wow, okay, so you can see that the Samsung 990 Pro in this enclosure was running around 5,800 megabytes per second for around 31 seconds, and then it dropped down to around 1,800 or 1900 megabytes per second for a majority of the rest of the copy. So it looks like the cache ended up being around 190 gigabytes on this 990 Pro. But then if we zoom out, we can see during the whole 15 minute copy, we actually ended up copying 1.8 terabytes of data in 15 minutes compared to 1.5 with the original OWC Aura Pro 4. And if you look near the end of the right, you can see that there's a large jump back up towards the 6,000 mark. This is because some of that cache, some of this big cache ended up moving over to the lower disk speed, freeing up some space to write to more of the cache file up here. So that's why we see a big jump right here. Neither of these two drives actually ended up moving enough data from the cache over to the regular storage to be able to free that up to be able to write to it. So overall, the 990 Pro in this OWC Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosure was pretty darn awesome. Like those speeds are crazy, but does it matter? Let's say you have a ton of files that you need to move from one drive to another because you need to archive them or back them up. Well, once you do that copy or archive, you're done, right? You're not gonna keep doing it generally. And while it's nice to have that speed to make that one-time copy, you probably don't really need it. I also tried to find out if there were other benefits to having a really fast SSD, like trying out code compilation using the Xcode benchmark. And running this test did not stress the IO of the storage enough to really warrant the need for a much faster SSD than a Thunderbolt 3 or USB 4 or even a 10 gigabit per second USB-C drive. Same thing with local AI image generation. So this image generator is using large language models to create images based on text input. And it just doesn't really hit the IO on the SSD at all. Video rendering on the SSD was the highest IO I could generate in regular use, which involved multiple 4K video files applying colors and effects and reading and writing to the drive at the same time. And even that didn't really require a drive more than 10 gigabits per second. So when do you really need that high of an IO? Well, I mean, databases, I guess, would be one. But to have a database that requires that much IO is going to be a huge database with a ton of users. So something more enterprise level, not something you're running or testing out on an external SSD. Now, VMs are the one thing that I can see having a benefit to a faster storage, especially if you're running multiple VMs, whether that's Windows or Linux or whatever. That's all gonna come back to those random read and write tests, which are really important for operating systems, especially if you're gonna run multiple operating systems off of one drive. But really in general day-to-day -day use, most workflows will not be affected by the speed difference of this OWC or this 990 Pro compared to this. The cache may come into play if you're dealing with really large projects. For example, my video files from one camera is usually around 50 gigabytes and I have two or three cameras most of the time. So I'm bringing in 150 gigabytes at the same time, which will instantly fill up this 50 gigabyte cache on the OWC Envoy Ultra. So having a larger cache may actually be more beneficial for larger projects than a faster, smaller cache that you're gonna find on here. Your best bet may actually be just to buy an external USB 4 or Thunderbolt enclosure and find the drive that has the biggest cache size so you can get just the most consistent experience for everything you do on the drive. Oh, and I will point out that the enclosure does matter. So this Acasis is a couple years old and this OWC 1M2 is newer and it's a giant heatsink. look at that thing. But I do get a little bit faster speeds from the Sabrent drive when it's in this enclosure compared to this one. So I'll leave a link below to both of these if you wanna check them out. This one's about $60 and this one's about $120. All right, so that's all I really know right now about this OWC Envoy Ultra Thunderbolt 5 SSD. This is the fastest external drive on the market you can buy today. And it's pretty cool, it's pretty fast. But what questions do you have about this Thunderbolt 5 SSD? Are you thinking of getting one? Are you waiting for something else? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you check out this video right over here because you're gonna love it. I got some M&Ms to eat. So until then, hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.